Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-109. Last time we were with our heroes, Sister Elaine met with Lord Nako and learned distressing news from a missive sent out by the High Bishop. Apparently Dingus, their friend from Phoenix, had been arrested and the name clearing was going poorly. The Independence Day celebration was in full swing and while the others were celebrating, the cleric was pensive in a tower room provided by the Lord. We rejoin the group as Sister Elaine returns to the adventurer's tent and meets with her friends. Loud snoring could be heard from within the camouflage tent, and several articles of male clothing were located leading to the entrance. Opening the flap, Sister Elaine flooded the interior of the structure with light, causing loud groans from the occupants. She quickly surveyed the entrance and noticed that there was an extra body lying on the grass within. Next to Cabe Silvertongue was a lovely young maiden, but the half-elf instead clutched a silver statue in his arms. Lady Irena blinked several times and gave out a big yawn before addressing the Reverend Daughter. <sighs> well, hello, my dear. I assume you found companionship like Cabe did, stated the mage. Elaine shook her head and looked sad. The olden woman picked up on it and began to rouse her companions by kicking them in the feet. Her efforts garnered a large snort and a fart from the human ranger. A swift kick to the trousers was sufficient enough to wake him from his slumber, albeit quite grumpy. With the group sufficiently awake, the young woman attached herself to a Cabe's arm but was asked to go find them some water as they had business to take care of. A warm kiss caused the half-elf to flush with embarrassment and the group watched the silk-covered woman leave the tent. An awkward moment of silence ensued and all eyes focused on Cabe who seemed embarrassed. Uh, did anyone happen to catch her name? he asked quizzically. His query garnered head-shaking from the group and Cabe polished his trophy. Damn bard groupies, which caused them to chuckle and Fargus to laugh out loud. The group refocused their attention to Lady Irena, then back to Sister Elaine. The cleric held up the narrow piece of parchment and waved it before handing it over to the mage who quickly read it and released a low whistle. With the others curious, the woman filled them in on the particulars, causing Cabe and Fargus to become deeply concerned. Bulger, being the odd man out, had to be given a brief history on the group's flight from Phoenix. Once caught up, the gnome sailor shared his concern. Well, what do we do now? he queried. Silence fell over the tent as each member of the group looked to one another for a hint of an opinion, but none could be located. Fargus Stoutheart rubbed his temples, obviously still feeling the effects from the alcohol of the previous night. Well, began the bard, I don't see how our mission has changed. We are still under constant threat of assassination. We have gray cloaks hounding us constantly. Every single one of our friends has suffered because we are wanted. The choice is simple. We go to Phoenix, we find the leader of the syndicate there, and we deal with him or her. Hell, for all we know, Dingus may already be dead and the High Bishop is probably next on their list of targets. I say, we stick to the plan. Go get a ship and fix this problem. Silence filled the tent as each of the others mulled over Cabe's opinion. Sister Elaine crumpled the piece of paper up and tossed it to one side of the tent. He's right. Everything he just said is factually correct. There is no denying it. I think we have to stick to the plan. The only issue I have is that the Syndicate 
no matter how powerful they are, would not go after the high bishop. The might of Dilo would be sent upon them. Bulger began to clothe himself and pointed out that he thought the cleric's opinion of the church was not completely realistic, which caused some ire to cross the woman's face. As she began a heated retort, Lady Irena tossed her opinion in, stating that she agreed that sticking to the previous plan was the only real answer available. We're stronger together, and they keep picking off our friends. If we wait any longer, we'll all be dead. Looking back to Bulger, she inquired how far away they were from finding a ship. Bulger confirmed that they were probably only a day, day and a half away from Haddonfield, but would ask some of the knights to make sure he wasn't missing something. The tent flap opened up and the young woman returned with a kettle of stew and several cups. Snuggling up to Cabe, she stared at him with doe eyes, making him quite uncomfortable. He struggled for words as the others dug into the kettle and watched him stammer nervously. "'What is your name, my champion?' inquired the woman. Taken aback at her question, he spit out his name and asked her if she had forgotten it already. Planting a large kiss on his surprised face, she gave his chin a tug. "'Oh, sweetie, I didn't bother to get your name last night. I just loved your performance on stage and wanted to see if you were just as good off stage. Her unabashed honesty caused a tense situation and made her giggle. The woman reached over and took the small statue from Cabe and gave it a big kiss before delivering it back to him, nearly knocking him off his feet. She began to leave the tent and turned, remarking to him that he was indeed every bit as good off stage as he was on, waving to the others before leaving. Good stew, said Bulger, as he slurped loudly. Sister Elaine looked over and inquired about the statue before the bard proudly announced he had won the Independence Day talent show. Hefting the trophy, he pointed out that the thing was solid silver and probably worth quite a lot. Sister Elaine inquired as to exactly what his performance contained that garnered such a rabid fan. The boys looked over to the bard equally puzzled as they had gotten quite drunk. Uh, stammered Cabe, and appeared to search for the words to describe his talent before Lady Irena broke in. Why, I'm surprised that all of you, she chimed in. Have you never met the greatest hero Fartook has ever seen? Slayer of Dragons? Crusher of Giants? The Scourge of the Grey Cloaks? Really? None of you know this individual? I'm quite surprised, as we are all apparently his henchmen. As the group looked at him in a questioning manner, he managed a weak smile and pointed out that he may have exaggerated his story a bit. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.